quick stop, 10 bags of fertilizer, off the Piney Grove. Welcome to Piney Grove, folks. I'm Brad, and I'm out here on our 20 acres in Northwest Florida. So I got a small window of opportunity here. We had some rain come through. It's wet the ground out here. And now we have another shower that's supposed to come through tonight. So, so what I'm gonna do is put out four bags of fertilizer before that rain hits tonight, and allow that rain to wash the fertilizer into the roots of the one acre food plot in the back of Piney Grove. So that's what we're gonna do today. But what I wanted to start this video out with was a review of the spreader. Now in our series, food pot, how to prepare a food pot, how to plant a food pot, you saw me use this spreader extensively. You saw me do acres and acres of uh, food pots with it spreading seed. That's exactly why we have it. We have it so that we can spread seed, but also I have it so that we can spread fertilizer. And I do have one of those cyclone spreaders, those V-shaped spreaders that goes behind the tractor. But what I found is that I can be more precise with the ATV spreader. Um, I can meter it out better. I can get the areas that uh, maybe I couldn't necessarily get with the tractor because it, it's easier to tell how wide this spreader spreads versus the cyclone spreader on the tractor. And also with the tractor spreader, it's real hard to reach around behind the tractor and reach the handle to increase or decrease the flow of seed or fertilizer. And it's, you know, three point hit. So it's a little bit of a pain to hook up and take off. It's got a PTO shaft and they can be difficult sometimes. And then also once you get fertilizer on a PTO shaft, you got to take it apart and clean it really well or else it'll weld itself together with rust. So all those things to say is that we've kind of migrated away from a PTO driven spreader for, for most of our stuff. And keep in mind, we're not talking about hundreds of acres. We're talking about you know, about 10 acres on a, on a hunting lease. And then we have about seven acres cleared out here at Piney Grove. So this is the ideal tool. It is a Cabela's 2.0 spreader. And we had the 1.0 spreader. In fact, we still have the 1.0 spreader. It's with a friend. Um, we bought it years ago and it's still operational. I think we've changed the motor out on it, but they made some improvements on the 2.0 spreader. I have nothing but positive reviews to say about it. Uh, I bought this spreader, nobody gave me this spreader, and I would tell you if it was good or bad either way, but uh, I highly recommend this spreader. And also, just in general, spreading with an ATV, I know there's a cost associated with owning an ATV, but spreading with an ATV is, is much more efficient than spreading with a tractor. It's easier to move around. I can just do a lot more with this setup than I could with the tractor setup. So let's take a closer look at this spreader and let's get spreading. Cause like I said, I have a small window of opportunity here. Okay, so I'll walk, or walk and talk here. What we have here is we have a bracket and the bracket is right here and that stays with the ATV. And if you see this square piece right here, that square piece, you can take this tub off and it will fit over top of that square piece. So it makes it easy to detach. And, and I'll actually do that. I'll demonstrate that. Uh, the spreader comes with this strap and that strap actually holds the spreader towards the front of the ATV because once it gets full of grain it tends to push down or it will push down. Now on the back of it they've got a little bit of a fertilizer or seed defect, uh, deflector plate and I, I have modified that so I'm going to put on my modifications and go, and go over that. But it's a fairly simple operation. Let's come back around here to this side and talk about the handle. So this was an improvement from 1.0 to 2.0, but you have this handle here, and the handle operates how open these gates are in here. See those gates open and close in the bottom. But it's a very sturdy unit. You know, I, I go 55 miles an hour in between food plots or locations with this spreader and it holds up real well. It has a cover and it has a screen in case your fertilizer is clumpy and uh, almost all fertilizer has a few clumps in it. Okay, I'm gonna quickly demonstrate how this thing comes off easily. This lifts off of that bracket. Now this bracket stays right on your four wheeler and for mine, I just hold it on with some Velcro straps because this because this strap will actually hold it on, but it fits over this square. Like that. And you hook this up to here and then you cinch it and you'll actually see it come forward. Now 
Now, once it's cinched up like that, it's not going anywhere. You can see I pushed the whole four wheeler back end down by pushing on that, but that'll hold. I think it holds around 100 pounds. It might hold almost three bags, but we'll see when we pour the fertilizer in. So like I mentioned, it comes with a screen. You just put that on top there and that screens out any big clumps of fertilizer so it doesn't get cost, caught in your feed gate. And then a nice cover. And that's very good for when you're going over bumps, you don't bump out fertilizer or seed. I don't have a bumpy ride, so I'm gonna leave that off. Then you have your power cord and it's simply a toggle switch. It's a switch on off switch. And I have a 12 volt cigarette lighter type attachment on my four wheeler. So I just plug it in that and then plug it into the actual spreader. So it's a super simple operation. Like I said, it's plugged into the cigarette lighter. You have an on off switch right there. And I run it underneath my seat so that the wire doesn't chafe. Then it comes over here and attaches with a two prong plug. And then this opens up your lift gate. This opens up your flow gate. When you hit the switch, it turns that. So simple enough, but one thing you gotta be careful about whenever you're fertilizing and you're dealing with anything metal is that it's gonna rust. I just changed the cowlings around the foot pegs on that ATV and we have a fix it series and, in that, and I have a fix it series on putting a new carburetor and putting the cowlings on that ATV, uh, Suzuki Iger 400. But the fertilizer will get trapped around some of the bolts that hold on the cowling and I actually had to use vice grips to take them off because they were completely corroded and I wash this thing every time when I use it, but fertilizer is highly corrosive. So in the back, the manufacturer made a very small uh, deflector plate, but you're gonna see where I took some foam board and made that deflector plate basically go up the whole side or the whole back of the spreader. So all fertilizer is deflected back into the plot and not forward onto me on the ATV. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like now. So like I said, I just cut some foam board out and it's just some standard foam board. This is left over from some presentation posters at my work, but you can buy this stuff cheap in Walmart. That's very good stuff and it's good for this purpose. Okay, I got my shield on and I had just come up with this idea this morning. I've used the bottom piece of foam board before, but I used to take fertilizer bags and just kind of wrap it around the top to keep the fertilizer from coming like down my back or the back of my pants. So it worked out. I had to uh, make a couple adjustments, but I got a tie strap holding it on there and I drilled those holes this morning and that one as well, but that keeps any fertilizer from going you know, off into the plot instead of back towards my ATV. And it protects, you know, all that undercarriage there. Now the bolts I was talking about were on this new cowling that I put on, but you can see a bolt back there. And this new cowling actually has some water drain holes, but that used to hold fertilizer, you know, especially nitrogen and rust out that bolt head. Uh, but this one has drain holes, so fertilizer can't stay in there. So that's an upgrade. Definitely an upgrade for this old bike. Like I've talked about this Suzuki Iger in other videos, it's a 2006 model that I got in 2008. So I've had it for 13 years and uh, put 1,000, 1,200 miles on it, and it's just been a workhorse. So I recently put a new carburetor on it, a new air, air box cleaner or an air, air filter, basically a foam air filter, and uh, I did buy a new spark plug, but I forgot to put that in this morning. But that's it. That is the Cabela's 2.0 spreader. And now we're going to load it up and get to spreading. First thing to do whenever you fill this, make sure that gate is closed or else all your stuff will end up on the ground. So I bought 
10 bags of fertilizer this morning for my food plots and I bought four bags last week. Fertilizer last year, I think was $16 a bag for triple 13. I just paid $19.50 a bag and most people are telling me that when their current supply runs out, it is going up to about $24 a bag. So we see inflation in all areas of our life, but it certainly uh, is impactful to people that rely on this type of stuff to make a living. Now, I'm not making a living with this food plot, nor with this property, at least not yet, but uh, just goes to show you the headwinds that uh, farmers and, and landowners are up against with this type of inflation. And that just about fills it up. There's a little bit of room here, but I got to come back anyway. So we're going to say 100 pounds is a 100 pound spreader. I wasn't sure. I thought it might be 150, but it's pretty full. I better hurry up. There is not much time. Look at those dark clouds rolling in. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I use the spreader a lot, but every time I use it, I got to reacquaint myself with it. So I'm going to open the gate probably about halfway and go all the way around the plot. Just see how much fertilizer that takes. I've got four bags. I got to go across this whole plot, but you'll see this plot is very green. We got some rain. Finally, it was starting to get overeaten by the deer. But uh, just the last couple of days, it looks like it's come back strong with the rain that we have. But I'm going to go around the edges of this plot, see how much fertilizer it puts out. I'll adjust my flow gate as I go if I'm putting it out too thick or not thick enough. Okay, I went around the plot one time and I had the gate open about quarter way and I, I'm still very full in the hopper. So I'm gonna open that gate up and do some fertilizing. Actually here when the fertilizer stops spitting out it doesn't hit the the metal deflector or the poster board but what I did is I went back and forth and I tried hard not to spin out on the corners because I didn't want to mess up my grains but I went back and forth equal distance and when I realized that I had extra fertilizer I went and split the difference in between those tracks so that I would get the areas at the edge of my spread pattern versus the center which is the center of the bike track so I did that and then at the end I still had a little bit of extra um, because I'm just trying to spread two bags on the front side of this plot, save the other two bags for the back side of the plot and then I just kind of spun around in the area where the tree um, ashes and stumps were buried in this plot and the topsoil got mixed with a lot of clay and the soil is still trying to improve after four years so I went ahead and really uh, kind of triple shotted that area but it's all looking good. by the screen will catch the clump. So there's a clump of fertilizer and maybe it wasn't milled correctly or maybe it's just a little wet, but uh, that could possibly clog up your flow gate. So it broke apart pretty easy, but that's what that screen is for. You know, this channel is about Piney Grove and developing this 20 acres out here. But uh, until you've owned acreage, and you see us, we're doing a lot of work out here, and at some point, we'll be doing more fun things like taking care of animals, which is still work, but it's a little bit more fun than, you know, digging trenches in 115 degree heat temp or heat index. Owning land and caring for your own land, it just, there's some, something about it. It's a good feeling. Now, I'd love to own 100 acres, and I'm still on a hunting lease, and I've been taking care of that hunting lease for 13 years, and we got 10 or 12 acres under tillage out there that we plant for the deer, but that's not mine. And I do invest, you know, fertilizer and lime and seed and time out there. And especially in the beginning years to get it the way I wanted. But here at Piney Grove, I'm investing in my own land and in my own future, but hopefully generational land 
for the family, you know, for our name, our legacy. But uh, it's just so nice to come out here and think, I own this. And uh, luckily we have great neighbors, so we don't, you know, have to worry about going up against the fence line and seeing something we don't want to see. Uh, but still, it's 20 acres. That's a lot of land to own. And, and I get it. I love to own a lot more. I just can't afford it. But anyway, it's just a good feeling. You know, this is my pot. I created this pot. You know, right now I'm just using this time before we live out here to improve the soil, but it's my soil and I own it. And that's just a good feeling. So for all you people out there that, you know, are maybe contemplating buying some land, uh, just keep in mind, yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of work involved with it, but there's just this huge sense of satisfaction, this huge, I don't even know if it's a pioneer spirit or something, but just you own land and you till it and it's yours and, you know, it's America and you can do what you want with your land for the most part, right? There's zoning, but uh, I don't know. It's just a feeling and I just thought about that when I was driving across this plot. But enough of me rambling. Let me set up this camera and let's capture the last half of this plot getting fertilized. Like I said, about the time I get good or proficient at the spreader, you know, I'm done spreading and, and uh, that's where we're at. So if you go back to my video where I planted this plot, it's called fall planting time. And I'll post the picture of the thumbnail here. But I spread the grains, the wheat and the rye with my solo front spreader. You saw the oats were binding up the spreader, but all of this greenery you see here is those three grains. But also if you look close, there's chicory right there. And if you look real close, there's clover right there. So after many years of experimenting with food pots, and it's a cover crop, right? It's for the deer. It's out here in Piney Grove. It's for the deer, but it's also a cover crop. I'm trying to build this soil so that we have choices with it later on. So the rye, the wheat, the oats, all that, that will decompose into the soil. And then the clover will actually create nitrogen from the air to put nitrogen in the soil. So I'm doing this. It's a two-part thing, one for the deer, but also to build up the soil in this plot because we do not know what we're gonna do with this plot. It could be a flower garden, it could grow watermelon, it could grow a, you know, a multitude of cash crop type of things in the future. But for now, we just need to take this planted pines and just make it as rich a soil as we can. So I experimented with cover crops with deer pots for years and I came up with this formula of rye, which is Renza bruzy rye or rye grain, oats, and the oats are really there kind of just for the deer because they're, they're kind of a sweet treat for the deer. And then wheat. All right, folks, we got this whole one acre pot spread. We put out four bags of triple 13, did it with the Suzuki ATV with the Cabela's 2.0 spreader. And like I opened up with, I really love this spreader. I think it's a fantastic product. It hasn't failed me. I will say when you clean it out, make sure you don't get water into the motor itself. I actually rinse it out with it turned upside down so water will not go in the motor because I did have it seize up from fertilizer, seizing up one of the bearings and I got it spun again and it's fine. You can replace the motor in it, but uh, that's my fault. Yeah, fertilizer is very caustic, it's very corrosive. And so you gotta be careful about that stuff. But it did a great job, it did it quickly. I had to go back over it a couple of times because I was trying to be careful and get good coverage, but one acre of Piney Grove got fertilized today with four bags of triple 13. So we put out, it's 13 pounds of each, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus per 100 pounds. We put out 200 pounds. So we put out 26 pounds of nitrogen, 26 pounds of phosphorus, and 26 pounds of potassium out here on this plot here. So it's a deer food plot, but it also is part of Piney Grove. And one day it may have cows on it. One day it may grow watermelons. We're just trying to build the soil. And the way you build soil is keep things planted on it. Uh, nature is going to keep that ground covered with something, weeds, briars, brush, but we'd rather have it covered with things that we wanna plant. And in the meantime, help the animals, whether it's the bees with the clover, the deer with the various grains that are in there. We got clover that's there that's grabbing nitrogen from the air and bringing nitrogen back into the soil from the air. So we got a lot of symbiotic type of relationships going on here, but it's all in an effort to improve this soil. It was planted pines, just like you see all around this one acre field or pot. 
that's what it was when we bought it, but we're trying to convert it back to an agricultural type of environment where we can actually grow something in it. So that's all I've got for you today. If you would, please click that like button. It really helps out our channel. Subscribe if you haven't already, and also share with your friends. That'll help us grow our channel as well. But otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care, y'all.